Hey guys, uh, we've been wanting to do a little demonstration of all the microphones that we have here in the studio. Uh, we're going to do this uh, in a clean fashion. We're not going to use any compression. Uh, we're going to try to get to the levels as loud as we can while keeping the noise floor minimum. Now, some of these mics uh, are ones that we don't normally use uh, for studio purposes. And uh, the first one we're going to cover is like that. So the, there's going to be a little bit of noise floor uh, problems with that one. The rest of them we should be able to keep it pretty clean. I'm going to continue talking through this mic throughout the entire thing so that you have a reference point and you can hear the difference between reference and each one of the mics so that you can really hear the difference between them. Uh, so we're going to get going on that. And here's the uh, Shure PG48. Hi there. Uh, so this microphone is pretty simple. You've probably seen uh, its cousin or its industry standard. I believe it's the Shure 58. Is that SM58. Right? Yeah. Shure SM58. And um, it goes for about $20, um, I think with free shipping too. And Whisker got his for twenty yeah, twenty dollars with the cable. Uh, so if you see, you know, anybody upcharging, then you know what to do. Go to somebody else. Um, it's got an XLR connection, and uh, yeah. The problem with this mic that she's demoing right now is that you cannot really get it loud enough for use in the studio. Loud. It's probably fine if you're, you know, talking through a PA system on it. But as far as, you know, for real, serious, trying to record voices, it's just not appropriate. Today on the school lunch cafeteria, we've got tater tots. Yeah, that would be a I good purpose for this mic. <laughs> it was my first mic, and <laughs> I've since learned a lot about mics. Yes. So that's the Sure PG-48. And it uh, is a dynamic mic, so it works basically like a speaker in reverse. What does that mean? You've got a diaphragm yep. uh, physically connected to a coil. Uh -huh. When the diaphragm shakes, yeah. it shakes the coil, and the coil moves around inside of a, uh, a magnetic field. Shake. It's an earthquake. <laughs> yeah. And then you're basically amplifying the output of the coil. Got it. Pretty simple stuff. Got it. And that was the Shure PG48. Okay, and here we're doing uh, M Audio Pulsar 2 uh, matched stereo pair. Um, I've been talking on one the whole time, and now? Now I'm talking on one as well. Uh, these are a matched pair. Uh, you can use them for recording in stereo. Uh, without any problems because they perfectly tuned to one another. Yep, and we actually originally got these for the instruments because then you could get stereo action, I guess. Yeah, we wanted to use these for recording violin and such, but after playing with them a bit, we realized that they worked for voice really well, surprisingly. Yep, and this is actually usually the one that you'll hear uh, us on when we, whenever we do you know, any of the other recordings for the AI stuff. Yeah, if we're not doing the on-camera mic, it's usually these. Yep. They just give a nice clean sound. And, uh, you know, we actually had to turn down the volume. Uh, like, we had to work with the volume settings a little bit after we recorded the SMPG48s. The PG48, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was like, whoa, it's too loud. We can, we got to turn these down. Yeah. These are uh, a small diaphragm condenser microphones. So they actually have a, uh, a capacitor in the front of them. And one of the plates of the capacitor is the diaphragm. Hey, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So they put, you're, you're giving them 48 volts of DC. And oh. then when you vibrate the plate, it changes the output on the other side of the capacitor. Now I actually understand that. Yeah. And then you take that. The, you know, the, the changes over time, and you amplify those to get the audio signal back out of it. So these you can get a lot of signal out of Very neat. without nearly as much noise. Very neat. And uh, price-wise, they go for about 280 to $300, including shipping. Yeah, for a pair. Yep. Uh, we're getting into, you know, serious mics that you can really use for stuff now. Yep. 
Okay, and now we've got a, uh, well, I've never actually heard the name of this company pronounced out loud, but I'm assuming that it's Natty. It's N-A-D-Y. This is a Natty RSM-4 short ribbon microphone. Check one, two, three, four. Sibilance, sibilance, sibilance. Yeah, well, <laughs> ribbon mics are, are a favorite of mine because they're they're very old technology. Uh, if, if you like listening to uh, early jazz recordings, chances are you really like li- listening to ribbon mics because that's what they used back then. Is that the case? Hmm. Yeah, I rather like this one, actually. It's got a nice uh, warmth, roundedness. Yeah, it's even better when you put it through a tube amp. Well, and we got plenty of those here. <laughs> mm-hmm. So uh, we've uh, hacked this one up a bit. Uh, I opened it up and I took out the inter the inner screen and the pop filter that's built into it. I removed those on one side and I put cloth tape on the back to isolate that side. And then we use it more as a directional ribbon mic. Uh, we like to hang it in front of the piano for yep. recording piano sounds. Yep. And at first I was afraid when Whisker started hacking. I was like, are you sure now? Maybe Maybe you'll mess it up. But uh, you, you hear that popping. Pop. That, that's what happens when you take the the pop filter out of it. Yeah, she can't talk directly at it. I had to kind of talk towards the side. Uh, it <laughs> works by having the uh, a very very thin ribbon of metal hung between two magnets, and then as the the ribbon vibrates, it uh, the magnets cause it to have an electric electrical current that flows from top to bottom. And then you take that current and you amplify it, and that's how you get the noise out of it. Could I get shocked if I licked it? I'm I'm pretty sure you can. Oh. Price probably wise? not. Probably not the best idea. Yeah. Price wise, just about one hundred. One hundred fifty. Um, I got mine for like seventy five bucks or something. Oh well, there you go. Yeah, it was a good good deal. Um, they're uh, manufactured in China. And they're just sort of uh, they have extremely low quality control standards on them which is why they're so cheap but if you're like me and you open them up you you know you know you've got a good one or a bad one by determining how much uh uh looseness is in the ribbon the tighter they are the better their response is i see this one's a little bit loose so it's not the best i mean it's it's worth 70 bucks but it's it's definitely not a uh a super valuable mic by any means. That's why you hacked it. Well, yeah, I made it better. And that's why I didn't worry about it too much. All right, uh, moving on to the Shure uh, 55 SH Series 2. That would be this. Uh, this is my mic. Uh, we don't really use it for studio recording per se, but I just had to own one because it's just the most beautiful uh, looking microphone I think that's ever been made. And Whisker always calls out his, quote, his mic whenever we see it in a movie, which surprisingly is quite often. Yeah. Uh, the, this mic is, I mean, it's just iconic. I mean, a lot of people call it the Elvis mic. It's, it's, you see it on movies and music videos all the time. You know, from like the 50s, 60s, that, that era. Yeah, they have that a lot. Mm-hmm. When was the first, uh, first version made or the uh, first series or whatever? I have no idea, but it, it's like almost all of the last century they oh. manufactured that mic. Oh, well, there you go. I mean, it was made for the uh, the military a lot. Uh, they used it as standard issue microphone for the military. Foxtrot Omega something. Well, well for <laughs> the... Uh, Sorry, hams. <laughs> the, for the their, their radio broadcasts, you know, they had their own... She? Hey, wait, hey, I know what we could do. We could do one of those uh, mystery, mystery uh, shows. I think I'd use the ribbon mics to do that. We'd probably oh. get a more authentic sound out of the ribbon mics. I see. That's too bad. But These uh, are pretty, quite pretty, though. It, it doesn't sound bad. I, this is the new version. They redesigned it uh, in the 80s or something uh, to use a more modern... Uh, uh, dynamic capsule in it uh, so this is this is a bit like the 
the PG48 and that it just has a, a dynamic uh, uh, diaphragm that moves a coil in a magnetic field and then they amplify that. It's not very complicated. Mm -hmm. What's fancy about this one is that it uh, has excellent noise canceling capabilities to the side and back. Hello. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's so noise canceling. So you can use it on stage with speakers sitting on stage with you like a PA system and the mic won't pick it up and feedback. That's why oh, you'll, that's cool. you know, every time you see a president speak before a certain date, mm -hmm. uh, far enough back in history, he'll always be talking into one of those and a couple of other mics too. But I they, see. that's why they used them on stages. Makes sense. Anyway, a little bit of history for you there. Yep. Uh, I like the mic. I'm just a fan of it in general. It's yep. it's not a particularly good sounding mic. It's, oh, it's not too bad. It's pretty. It, I mean, it's clear. It, it's, it's missing you know, the low end. Yeah. You know, you you just miss the low end on it. Right. But it's it's good for talking through. Yep. And price wise, we've got about mm, from one sixty to one eighty. Yeah, it's a vanity thing, so they charge a little bit more than it actually should be. But you know, who's buying it? It's uh, prop masters and uh, fans of old radio. So fanboys, basically people who can afford it. And next up, we have the uh, the lovely. Uh, cascade victor microphone indeed it's a long ribbon microphone yeah. and uh if you stare long enough at the grill it kind of does a tricky thing with your eyes in 3d and i try not to look at it <laughs> this one has similar insides as the uh the uh, short ribbon microphone that we took apart earlier i however am not going to take this microphone apart because it's rather expensive and uh, I, I like you guys. I, I don't like you guys enough to, to risk <laughs> hey, this microphone. <laughs> that's not nice. But it's it's basically the same thing, except it has a, a long ribbon instead of a short one. Yep. I and, think it uh, set us back about 300. Yeah. Buckaroos. So, so you know, not, not, not taking it apart. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Um, uh, this, uh, the, the body on this one is based on the RCA 77 which is sort of the mic that you'll see on newscasters' desks. I think uh, Johnny Carson had one of those. Yeah, one of those guys. Yeah. I don't know if they still have it now, but... Whoever's doing that show now still has it Letterman, sitting on the desk. Yeah, maybe. I think it's Letterman. Yeah. So. I don't watch this Whatever. stuff. So. Whatever. But, you know, it, it's a very recognizable mic uh, shape. Very attractive. Yep. Uh, this one we're more interested in for its sound than for its looks. The Cascade Victor. Uh, let's let's hear some uh, smooth, cool tones. Yeah. The nice <laughs> thing about uh, this mic is that you can hear the front and the back equally. So if you want to add an ambiance of a good room to the recording sound, you don't want to just get the voice, but you want to get the sound of the voice in the room itself, then you would pick this mic for recording that. I don't want to make things echo in this room. It's kind of, kind of a little small. And I no, have no, to no, no, yell quite not necessary. Loudly. <laughs> we'll let them use their imagination. Imagination. All right, echo. let's go on to our next mic. Next. All right, and the uh, last mic we're going to cover in this one is uh, the Shure Five Twenty DX Green Bullet. Hello, this is Addie, your flight attendant. For today, we're going from. Uh. <laughs> As uh. you can hear, this is a, uh, you know, uh, kind of like what used to be in telephones from. back in the day. Yes. Uh, that, that sort of mic. Johnny, have you eaten your greens today? Uh, we got this mic uh, <laughs> for effects mostly. Every time we need to make a telephone uh, conversation, a sort of sound or a... Uh, an old school radio, like a, a helicopter operator doing the traffic report. It's really cold out here, guys. There's snow drifts up my head. Ah. <laughs> this mic is really popular with uh, harmonica players. Yes. It works really well for that. It's uh, It cuts out a lot of frequencies. It does, does not have a flat re re uh, frequency response at all. And it just so happens that the places where it's not flat make a harmonica sound really good. Ba -da 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 -da. 
da, 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 this is a, a remake of the green bullet uh, the green bullet's been around you know for 80 years or whatever and uh people like to collect the originals and uh restore them to full and sure decided that they would also produce a new version of it to keep that spirit going and this is a dynamic microphone with high impedance yeah it's a it's a bit different i mean you can plug this thing directly into a uh uh guitar amplifier and play harmonica through it and it just sounds great yeah it's got a nice a lovely uh quasi crunch to it as you can tell yeah and you can sound like a flight attendant and join me from <laughs> to <laughs> it's also very popular with uh addy because she's an absolute dork and oh but it's so much fun to talk through you give her this mic and a pair of headphones and she's entertained for an hour <laughs> well you know it, did you know this was made in mexico yeah they moved all their production down there oh. um in the 90s i think I see. Sure did. Sure did. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wait, they're sure? You know. Oh, you're right. It's a sure model 520DX. Yeah. That's right. We we have quite a lot of sures. Yeah, that's a whole NAFTA thing. Oh, yeah. As soon as that happened, sure went over the border. I see. So that is our lovely, lovely bullet mic. Yeah, I like it. It's a lot of fun. You should try talking to it more often. Well. You might want to might want to make a phone call you know be like yes yes i've had my greens for today mummy dearest all right well i think that's enough mics for today uh, i think so <laughs> i hope you guys found this uh informative and enlightening get you later ciao we post videos all the time so don't forget to subscribe and follow us on twitter at tymkrs